Hello again, and this, as I'm sure you're aware, is the spanking new card from NVIDIA, the third to join the GTX 10 series family, the GeForce GTX 1060. About two weeks ago I did an unboxing, but I wasn't yet allowed to tell you how it performs or show you any gameplay at all. That changes. Now. The review in Boga has been lifted, and if all you want to know is, is this card any good, then the short answer is, yes, it's good. Very good, in fact. And if what you're after is a card that will soak in some maxed out 1080p AAA game time, this is your new home. This is where you live. This is where you're comfortable. This is where you get cozy. While those who came before it, the GTX 1080 and GTX 1070, burn along on the Pascal GP104 brain, the GTX 1060 gets a new Pascal arrangement, and they call it the GP106. And NVIDIA have optimized it for efficiency and power, made to deliver GTX 980 level in-game performance, but at a performance per watt arrangement that makes it about twice as energy efficient while doing so. Sipping in a relatively paltry 120 watts of power while still being able to drive the latest VR experiences smoothly and of course kick the hell out of traditional gaming. And the best bad about all this is it does so while putting on a hat that reads MSRP starting at US 249. The GTX 1060's brain has 1,280 CUDA cores, precisely half that of the monster GTX 1080 Big Brother, and it has 6 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory clocked up at 8 gigabits per second. And if you've been paying attention recently, you'll have realized we're starting to see games that really make exquisite use of reaching past the common 4 gigabytes found in the enthusiast level GTX 960s and GTX 970s and up. Like Doom, for example, which won't even let you max it out to the nightmare level settings without more than 4 gigabytes bytes of video RAM. So, how does the GTX 1060 do in Doom? In nightmare settings? I'll tell you in a minute. And that's what we call in the business a tease. But first we need to get some of the other important details out of the way, like the boost clock of 1.7 GHz, which NVIDIA claim, boldly enough, in their marketing materials, it can and will be easily overclocked to 2 GHz. And of course I will have a whole separate video about what I got my Founders Edition to clock up to and what kind of difference it makes in game. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And lastly, before we get to the benchmarks proper and that sweet, sweet gameplay and frame rate numbers we're all craving so badly, of course, like its big brothers in the GTX 10 series, the GTX 1060 has all of the Pascal tricks in full force, like my personal favorite, Ansel, and perhaps more importantly to more people out there, the simultaneous multi-projection technology, which, among other things, is superb for VR in particular, boosting frame rates up to three times over previous generation GPUs. So, with all that out of the way, we can move on to the benchmarks now, starting with VR. Sadly, I'm not yet the breathlessly excited owner of a VR kit of any kind, so the best I can do for now on that side of things is show you the Steam VR benchmark, in which the GTX 1060 actually noticeably outperforms my overclocked GTX 970, and buries the needle deep, deep within the green bar of VR goodness which meshes well with NVIDIA's claims that the 1060 offers up 980 level performance in VR. So, it's a safe bet that the GTX 1060 is now the new sweet spot for getting thoroughly VR ready while keeping a nice, calm budget. The standard extreme setting on the Valley benchmark keeps telling the same story, of premium level performance delivered from a budget-friendly card, with a score of over 4000 and a frame rate clawing out for the triple digits. And it's under tests like this that we start seeing the thermal behavior too. While I saw temperatures climb as high as 78 degrees under the longer burn-in runs, usually it's happy sitting somewhere under 70 degrees while under full loads. And I will come back to this with some fan noise tests in a bit. But now it's on to the all-important real-world gameplay performance. With a recent update to the Forza Motorsport 6 Apex Open Beta, which among other useful things unlocked frame rates and includes an on-screen FPS counter, it has made itself useful for comparative benchmarking tests. Hooray! Now, what you're seeing here is the game entirely maxed out. Everything I could turn on, I turned on. Every option I could turn up, I turned all the way up. The exception being that I turned off all the crap that tries to dynamically lower the resolution and texture details and stuff when the going gets rough. 
We don't need compromises here, as you can plainly see for yourself, with the frame rate only ever dipping below triple digits when passing a large crowd of spectators, for example. The usual numbers swimming happily between 120 and 145 FPS, making for an exceptionally liquid smooth racing experience. of the Tomb Raider once again with everything maxed out and pumped all the way up, it's again a very impressive showing. A marked boost coming out of the DX12 option as well, where it pushes the maxed out experience to a benchmarking average frame rate of 66 frames per second, cracking open a can of triple digit numbers from time to time in the actual real world gameplay. And again, these kinds of numbers I'm more used to seeing from overclocked GTX 970s, cards which carry a noticeably higher price tag. Back to racing now, this time with the gorgeous scenery of Project Cars whipping past the hood. And yes, you guessed it, I have once again buried my foot into the firewall of the Ultra Settings options, turning all the things on or up in the, as it turns out, pointless attempt to get this mini monster of a car to start choking out, or at least wheeze, even just a little bit, as I thought should be befitting a card carrying the banner of happy budget enthusiast gamer gear. But alas, or actually more accurately, hooray, the GTX 1060 grits its teeth, takes up a kung fu stance and kicks eight kinds of hell right out of every corner, every ray of sunlight, every speck and particle of dirt and every raindrop project car throws at it, preferring the happy township of the mid 70s FPS, rarely visiting the poorer relatives in 60 FPS Ville, and sometimes going shopping in the mid 80s district. And outside of my clumsily mixed metaphors, well, as you may imagine, it's a blissfully silky smooth experience. Absolutely lovely. in Project Cars are the exact kind of numbers we see in the physics-heavy lands of Just Cause 3. Except here, the GTX 1060 gets even cheekier, throwing itself up to 90 FPS or so. And while at this point it should go without saying, yes, this is maxed out all graphics, all the twiddly bits twiddled all the way up till they could twiddle no more. Except for the motion blur, which I turn off in Just Cause 3 because it makes me want to chunder. And while we're in the mood for a bit of urban havoc and sandboxed fun times, I threw GTA 5 at it. Yes, maxed out. And this is another one of those games that can really take advantage of the extra breathing room the 6 gigs of DDR5 VRAM delivers, because you can turn up some of the niceties like density and variety of population and traffic beyond the standards for the high and ultra settings and whatnot. And with everything turned all the way out, the 1060 still won't scream for mercy delivering an experience consistently around about the 45 frames per second or so mark in the busiest moments of gameplay. Yes, it's below that magic 60 FPS PC gamers love to target, but I've spoken about this before. In a first person shooter I'd call being below 60 frames per second problematic. In a game like GTA 5, I don't think it harms a nanosecond of the gameplay experience being below that. But of course if you think differently there are a few settings you can flick down a notch that you'll barely notice and it will pump up past 60 FPS easily on this card.
Even the notoriously GPU-brutalizing ultra settings of The Witcher 3, and with the even more notoriously aggressive Hairworks maxed out past the standard ultra settings, it can barely pull the breath from the mighty lungs of the GTX 1060. Honest to goodness, I'd expected utterly maxing out this game above all others to finally shatter the kneecaps of the little GeForce card that could. But here we are, trotting around in the stunning and soon to be Ansel screenshotted landscapes of Jerry the Witch's world in very, very playable frame rates. Always at least above 30 frames per second, often at around 45, and sometimes reaching up into the 50s. And lastly, here's the fantastically superb Doom under the Vulcan API, which was recently patched into the game. And here again, we see the benefit of the six gigabytes of RAM over the two or four gigabytes the predecessor GTX 960 models had. And while I've shown before, a four gigabyte model of the GTX 960 can impressively actually manage around 60 frames per second in Doom in ultra settings. With the GTX 1060's extra RAM, Doom permits us to turn on the Nightmare Switch, pumping up the texture and detail to levels only the highest premium end of last generation's GPUs were even allowed to attempt. And dear sweet blood-soaked joy, look at it. I mean, look at it. Watch it dance and twirl and desecrate the corpses of a triple-digit frame rate. <laughs> gobsmacking. And this isn't even with an overclock in place. This is bog standard NVIDIA factory clocks on a Founders Edition card. This is the beginning. This is the start line. I can only wonder what the board partners will squeeze out of it with some custom boards and bespoke power delivery circuits with their fancy coolers and chip binning out of box overclocks. While I suspect most people will opt for one of those board partner flavors of GTX 1060s, we should take a quick listen to the fan noise from the Founders Edition. With its premium materials and design, it is really nicely put together, actually. It feels fantastically solid, and it's very, very pretty, with its die-cast aluminium body machine finished for strength, and which will be exclusively available from NVIDIA.com. So here we go, I'll just let you listen. And just by way of some comparative measure about exactly how loud 60% or the average gaming speed is, is what you're listening to right now. I'm speaking to you about 50 centimeters away, just, just off to the side of the camera here. Hello! Um, and as you can hear, I can easily, easily talk over this level of noise. So that's actually pretty damn good. I bet it's a long way from being close to the quietest GTX 1060 we'll see, but as far as NVIDIA's blower coolers go, it's a big step into being much quieter than the older style blowers were. And under normal gaming, I rarely heard it make a fuss at all. And that, by the way, is in my open air case too, without a single panel or window to dull the sound at all. 
basically the worst case scenario for any kind of noise coming from a GPU. So, now then, if this card hasn't got you biblically excited yet, then I don't know what else to tell you. If what you want is a GPU for 1080p gaming at high and ultra level graphics, this is your new sweet spot, there is no doubt about it. The bang for buck calculation here is exquisite. And let's not forget, it'll get you VR ready, not just at a bare minimum, but at performance over that of the GTX 970, which is, or rather was, considered to be the place to be for VR while trying to keep your budget under control. The GTX 1060 is faster, cheaper, and even more power efficient. And aside from the lack of SLI fingers, which I touched upon in my unboxing, and perhaps I'll do a video expanding upon that later, I honestly can't think of anything that I think this card is missing. Clearly it's got plenty of power, it does it on a modest amount of juice, and its price is superb given what it's capable of and what this kind of performance cost us last generation of GPUs. The GTX 1080 may indeed claim the crown of the new king of GPUs, and that must make the GTX 60 a prince with Game of Thrones level ambitions and many, many knives hidden upon its person to softly slide into the unsuspecting squishy spleens of anyone it doesn't particularly like the look of. This is, without a doubt, a card to keep a very close eye on. So stay tuned for the follow-up video where I find out how far this card overclocks and what that does to the games. Thanks for watching, I am Lutty, and I will catch you next time.